Hey, Luke, you know what Russell Wilson's still going to be asking for come Christmas? Oh, God. Yeah. Still the offensive line. It's still not there. It's not coming together for <laughs> Russell Wilson. And hey, look, while everybody else is out there talking about how much the Seattle Seahawks are struggling, we're going to talk about the Washington football team and how well they performed on Monday Night Football. We've also got Lock It or Mock It for you, buying or selling some of the red hot, white hot teams in the NFL. And of course, we're also going to take a look at our fantasy form and get you all the fantasy news that you need, all on today's episode of Locked On NFL. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On NFL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day. Uh, it is Tuesday. That means that you get me, Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson NOLA. We're going to talk about the slop fest between the Seahawks and the Washington football team. We're going to talk about, uh, I mean, Washington's on a three game win streak and there's some other teams that are just like getting really hot that are kind of surging out of nowhere. We're going to talk about all that stuff. And of course we got the Tuesday fantasy forum, a couple of running back injuries going on. We're getting into playoff time. It's time to really, really dial in. So do not miss out on that. Uh, but first we have to talk about an extremely normal 17 to nine game. Uh, that's they got there in the way you would expect to get the Washington gets to 17 points. The, the way you absolutely would expect um, two touchdowns and a field goal. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, except one of those touchdowns was had a blocked extra point brought, brought back for two by a defensive lineman. Uh, and then they on that play, Washington's kicker gets hurt, so they had to go for two every time and go for a fourth and goal at the end of the game that nobody in their right mind would have gone for. They could have kicked a chip shot field goal to go up two scores, but they had to go for it because they don't have a kicker now, and then that actually gave Seattle a chance to come back and win it. They score a touchdown, but they couldn't convert the two-point conversion in kind, so the lack of kicker forced Washington to make an aggressive decision that they probably wouldn't have made anyways going for two earlier in the game. Mm -hmm. That ends up being the difference in the game, forcing Seattle to do the same, and then they couldn't convert it. So a very, very weird game we learned about kickoff alignment rules yes. in this game have to be outside uh, of the gotta be outside of the hashes man what are you doing who knew nobody knew that before <laughs> clearly not refs that could guy. have refs could absolutely have made that rule up on the spot and nobody would be able to challenge <laughs> no one it. would be able to say anything <laughs> there's no one would take the time to like flip through the rule book and say you know what i'm just not <laughs> wait sure. a minute i, I didn't, didn't know about that before said right. nobody <laughs> So look, Seattle falls to three and eight, and they don't have their first round picks. They're currently giving up the fourth overall pick to the Jets right now. So it's Which is bleak become stuff in Seattle. Quite an incredible top ten in the NFL draft, by the way. Yeah. At, at, at the moment, we have three straight back to back selections right now. If the NFL draft were to start today after twelve weeks, Lions, Texans, Jaguars, then Jets, Jets, Giants, Giants, Eagles, Eagles, Panthers, just like we all thought it would be. Uh, before the season began what a back crazy back crazy season right so far i hope that holds i do too I, if it at least give me like all three of those teams having two in the top 10 but geez if i can get them all back to back like yeah. that that would just be outstanding you think they could like trade up with each other <laughs> just move around a little bit just yeah. for fun like, just hey, to, uh, to line it up <laughs> yeah right. let's get them all back to back we're gonna do our thing here um but it, look it is interesting man it's it yeah. was an interesting game to watch yeah seattle's in the pits right now right and and, and we've all been kind of talking about like this is the big end of an era moment it kind of feels like for p carroll and this russell wilson team it's just this absolutely anemic offense that couldn't go anywhere um, you know, one touchdown on the day and the pick two and the, the, the thick two, as I'm going to call it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it. And then you got the that's... late touchdown too, the the very late touchdown. Oh, but yeah. And then the late on. touchdown, of course. Mm-hmm. But that yeah, late touchdown against like prevent. Like that's it. Right. Um, rough stuff for Seattle. But look at Washington go. 
that's what I'm saying. Like, Washington's looking really good right now, and Washington's done a lot of things well. Look, they only allowed one catch to DK Metcalf. This is not a team that's very well known for its past coverage, but you had guys like Cameron Curl and Landon Collins and Kendall Fuller that looked fantastic. Fuller getting the interception on the two-point conversion after giving up that last-second touchdown or you know just a few seconds left touchdown at the end of the game. Hard to regroup that quickly, but Fuller coming down with the interception there. DK Metcalf didn't get his first catch until 59 minutes into the game and then you're talking about a team that spent most of its time the Seattle Seahawks with like 18 rushing yards seven or five straight three and outs I mean this was a really really fantastic performance by that Washington football team defense who we were told at the very beginning of the season was going to be this phenomenal defense but then they were in like the 20 25th 29th area when it came to total points and total yards allowed finally this defense looking like what we expected it to consistent pass rush on Russell Wilson in this one which could have just as much to do with the offensive line as the pass rush but you know what it was relentless nonetheless and they had themselves a nice game yeah, I, I won't pretend to to watch every Washington game or anything like that, but every time I see Taylor Heineke, he looks better. Yeah. Yeah, he's and, fun to watch, man. Like he is yeah. he to me is a less painful to watch version of Ryan Fitzpatrick. Right. Like he okay. has a little bit of a hot streak to him. Hat plays. Yeah. You know, he mentioned that he plays with like with his head on fire a little bit, just like Ryan Fitzpatrick. But to me, you know, he's got a couple of YOLO balls in there, but it's not the same thing as Ryan Fitzpatrick. And it's not as painful to watch when it's going poorly because Heineke sort of has a floor that I think is a little bit more manageable than what we've seen with uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick in the past. It helps when you got a run game out there, too. Yeah, he was a stowaway on the Vikings practice squad for a couple of years, Heineke. In the early mm-hmm. in his career, he was like our, our QB three for two or three years. So I have a lot of fond memories of like preseason Taylor Heineke heroics. Sure. <laughs> beating up on third teamers. I love seeing how far he's come over the years, bouncing between team like from team to team and going through injuries and stuff like that. Now look, he's like a bona fide starting looking quarterback. That rocks. And it rocks for Washington because it takes a little bit of pressure off of them to find like the true next guy right away. You can kind of right. you have somebody for that guy to compete with and it becomes easier if you don't just want to make Taylor the guy outright, which I don't think Washington does. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe people disagree. But like, if you don't want to do that, you can at, you at least have a guy for a rookie to come in and compete with instead of having to just anoint them the job and then struggle like what we're seeing with like Trevor Lawrence or Zach Wilson elsewhere in the league. Yeah, and at least you can get into a situation to where you're not having to change quarterbacks multiple times in a season and all of this right, stuff. Right, like, like what the Bears are have, dealing with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and this, you know, look, I'm watching it right now in New Orleans, and, you know, they're about mm-hmm. to go into their third starting quarterback of the season, potentially, and everything with Taysom. And so it's nice to just be able to move forward with one guy and think, all right, this is going to be the guy going into next season. And look, if they happen to land some kind of big fish or some big draft, you know, uh, slide happens mm-hmm. and they can get their hands on, on a quarterback, then great, so be it. But they're not going to be in panic mode, which I think is really, really important, particularly at that position, because that could put you in a hole for many, many years if you end up panic buying a quarterback at some point in the offseason. Yep. Don't want to be stressed out. Never. Never want to be stressed out. Before I tell you about how to uh, not get stressed out, I want to tell you that coming up next, we're going to talk a little bit more about these uh, Washington football team wins over the course of the last couple of weeks, as well as other teams on win streaks. Lock it, mock it, are we spying or selling some of the white hot teams in the NFL right now? We'll talk about that in a moment. But getting back to relaxing, let me tell you a little bit. I could have I could have started the theme song if I really wanted to there, but I'm not. I, can, I get here. I'm it. not. I know. I don't know. It was right there. It was all the tip of the tongue. Uh, but I want to tell you about our friends over at Beachbound Vacations. Listen, I used Beachbound Vacations myself. My lovely wife and I got married a little bit over a month ago, and you know we had this great sponsorship and, and this great partnership with uh, Apple Leisure as well as Beachbound Vacations. And so we used the beachboundvacations.com in order to go ahead and book ourselves a uh, beach vacation, which was awesome. And that's where we spent our honeymoon. It was great. We got to sit on the beach. We had a nice taco flight, had some football as well. Nice little poolside area. But our backyard was the beach, so it was really dope to just be able to go and hang out by the water. Um, I grew up on the bayou, not the same kind of water in the bayou as there are as there is in the beach. So you really like the beach stuff when you can get it. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, it has uh, a ton of different options for you in terms of different ways that you could be spending your upcoming vacation. So go and check out at beachbound.com today. Find out what you're bound for over at beachbound.com. All right, everybody, continuing on with this episode of Locked on NFL. Thanks again so much for making us your first listen of the day. Every day, it's Tuesday. you got myself, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola. 
Luke Braun on that side, uh, at Luke Braun NFL. Uh, we're going to jump into our That's lock and oh, I know, I know, I know. Bop, bop. The audio uh, people are really going to be yeah. confused at that. He I pointed know. at like, me, why was that masterfully well, navigating the mirroring that webcams do. Yeah, it's it, it was a challenge. <laughs> but hey, we're here. And speaking of a challenge, uh, the there are a couple of teams that have been up to the challenge here recently on some win streaks. We just talked a bit about the Washington football team. We're going to dive into our lock it or mock it. Haven't gotten to do one of these in a while, so very excited excited to be able to bring this segment back. Lock it effectively, meaning that we're buying. Mock it, meaning that we're laughing at it. We're selling. So when it comes down to it, which of these teams are we locking or are we mocking when it comes to their current win streaks? We'll start with the Washington football team, who we just talked about. We can go through this pretty quickly. Lock mm-hmm. it or mock it on the Washington football team. I'm going to go with the lock it for them. The NFC sucks. There's like 10 teams with five wins. Washington's surging. Taylor Heineke looks like he's figuring some things out. And they're good on both sides of the trenches. That's huge for me. Good D-line, good O-line. That's where it all starts. Yeah, I think they might just be coming together at the right time. The thing that I like about them, too, is that the last six games they have on the schedule, a lot of them are opponents with which they are very familiar, which include two matchups with the Philadelphia Eagles and a matchup with the New York Giants. You bet I'm locking it right now when it comes to these Washington football teamers. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about another one of some easy teams on the schedule, uh, including the uh, Giants. <laughs> what about yes. Miami? Ah. They're coming out of nowhere. They're on a four game win streak. They start, they go one and seven. They're now five and seven. They are one game as it stands right now. The Chargers in the seven seed are six and five. So they're or a game, game and a half, game and a half out of playoff position right now. They're coming full speed ahead and they got coming up Giants and Jets. Oh, man. And listen, not only were they one and seven, Luke, they're coming off of a seven game losing streak (laughs) as well. They lost those seven games in a row. And then here they are now with four wins in a row. But you know what? I'm going to go mock it with these guys. I think what makes it a little bit tougher on them is the division that they're in. The New York, uh, excuse me, the New England Patriots are surging at the right time. The Buffalo Bills are still a very good team. They'll be the third team in the NFC, excuse me, the AFC East. Uh, you know, look, there's seven playoff teams, so they could still get into playoff contention. But I just think that the road ahead of uh, that the road ahead of them is complicated by the division that they're in. And so for me, I'm going to go mock it. But hey, I like what these Miami Dolphins are doing so far. And I think they have three very winnable games ahead of them on their schedule. Yeah, it's interesting because those I mean, there's four games, right? Patriot to mm-hmm. get against the Patriots two against the Bills. They've already played both their Bills games and they won one of the Patriots games. They have another one that'll be week 18. Um, but look, Giants, Jets, whatever's left of your Saints. Those are their mm-hmm. next three games and then they get Titans and Patriots. That's their last yeah. uh, few games here. I don't know. I I know like ESPN's FPI gives them like a four percent chance to make the playoffs. But there's something about a young quarterback kind of figuring it out yeah. where it feels I mean, look quarter young I say it all the time young quarterbacks need a minute but once they the game slows down it kind of flips like a switch it, it kind of does come out of nowhere we might be seeing that with Tua right now I'm gonna mm. go lock it I th- I believe in I love it. it let's go they got a defense they got a coach they're fighting for let's do it go Dolphins Dolphins a thousand years Hey, and look, there's a nice thing that could potentially happen to them week 18, depending upon how much the New England Patriots are winning or where they oh, are true. at that point. It, they, that could be a game to where their starters down, all that, and they're going up against B-Squad uh, New Maybe. England. Maybe. Uh, does point, Bill so. Belichick like ever do that? I would imagine that he would with a rookie quarterback, but that's Maybe. just my that's that's my assumption, right? So we'll see exactly what happens there. But look, uh, it, it could work out for Miami. I think I would I think I would lock it when it comes to Miami. I kind of mock it when it comes to the playoff chances, though, just because of the whole situation and, and the division that they're in. But we'll see what happens there. Uh, should we take a look at the opposite coast, opposite? conference the nfc west the san francisco 49ers on a bit of a win streak right now talk about a tough uh, yeah talk about a tear and and a division we expected to be tough but right now is kind of a little bit more open than we anticipated with a three and eight Mm -hmm. seattle seahawks team how are you feeling about them san francisco 49ers remember uh brian peacock and uh eric crocker might be listening yeah uh, well, they should heed my word because on our crossover Thursday, I exactly predicted the Vikings game, <laughs> 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 like the, the flow of it and everything. Um, I, I do like what San Francisco is doing. I love a team mm-hmm. that that can find a way to make running the ball an, an effective thing and yeah. not just a tool to set up something else. Um, there is something about Jimmy Garoppolo I just can't trust. 
And their next couple of games um, at the Seahawks divisional game will always be a little weird. Mm -hmm. Not unlike the Miami thing Um, at Bengals is a really, really tough one. The Falcons are kind of weird and frisky. And then the tight they've got some tough games coming up here. I am going to go with a mock it just because there is this huge glut of five win teams. One of them being Washington. Um, My Minnesota Vikings are in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's like Philadelphia was kind of hot before they lost to the Giants. It's a really tough place for San Francisco, and I could see them kind of falling off with a difficult upcoming schedule. Yeah, that's the big thing for me. And and you named exactly my two biggest concerns when it comes to the San Francisco 49ers. Tough remaining schedule. And then my concern with the San Francisco 49ers for the past few seasons quarterback play that have Mm -hmm. those are the two big things for me and and as much as i love kyle shanahan and what kyle shanahan has the ability to do and has proven that he can do up until the you know there was the news that broke not too long ago that the there are some beliefs that the san francisco 49ers might be looking at trading jimmy garoppolo this offseason and moving ahead with trey lance until they fully commit to trey lance next season hard for me to trust where this team is right now here in 2021 right so for me it's it's a market when it comes to that They play like a high variance game where they want to like they want to shorten the game so everybody gets four possessions and like take a half a quarter with every drive. And when you do that and you have a quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo is going to like throw a bad pick or something like that, like it kind of opens you up to, I think, too much bad stuff. I don't like I don't think that's right for San Francisco. I think they're better than that. I think they can play a little more. It decreases your margin of error, right? And and, right. And it, it really, really puts those interceptions those bad throws those those turnovers it puts all of that under a microscope big time and magnifies the impact of them on a shorter game in that in that case and so it just makes it really really tough yeah and that's a a critique i also have for the vikings by the way in case anybody thinks it's sour grape because we my team just lost to them don't worry i'm way madder at the vikings than i am at you guys it's fine we've got our own things i'm gonna make i'm gonna make this joke a couple times at least jimmy garoppolo knows the difference between the center and the guard am i right yeah, true. Both yeah. the Vikings front office and Kirk Cousins struggling to differentiate <laughs> centers from guards. <laughs> I'll find I'll find somewhere else to get that in again later on in the day. <laughs> uh, so biggest winning streak in the league right now. Six game mm-hmm. win streak. Your New England Patriots. Bill Belichick uh, figured it out. Mac Jones on uh, fire. I, this is an easy one for both of us, right? It's a big old yeah. locket. This is a big old locket, man. You just you don't bet against Bill. You know what I'm saying? You don't no. bet against Bill. I know my boy, our guy, Mike Debate over at Locked On Patriots could not be happier right now. But Mac Jones has been outstanding. Bill Belichick is outstanding. Uh, uh, Kendrick Bourne is born again. They are building this uh, this whole thing around a run game as well and good defense. I mean, they have everything that they need. It's quintessential New England Patriots football. Why would you why would you pick against them at this point? It's so fun. We're, I mean, we're watching a lot of rookies kind of grow on the fly and, mm-hmm. and kind of figure that, you know, Trevor Lawrence and I mean, Zach Wilson struggling a ton. Trey Lance isn't on the field. Justin Fields is having his old thing. And, and here's Mac Jones just kind of just, being a guy. Just plugging away, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very it, this has been like a quiet surge for them. Um, and yeah. I just I love that for that. You're right, though. Don't bet against Bill. We're going to get to the Tuesday Fantasy Forum in a little bit. But what you can bet against is the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, which is what I did on betonline.ag and Monday Night Football, uh, w- which paid dividends. But here was my thing. So I got a story for this for this uh, bet okay. online spot. Um, so I did. I went onto their new redesigned website with their live betting apparatus, which is my favorite way to do. It. I love the live bets. I love feeling love out the flow betting. of a game. And in a early second quarter, there was a first half over under of seventeen and a half points. All I needed was a touchdown and any other score to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Washington goes down, gets a touchdown with about 50 seconds left in the half. So I'm kind of sweating. I'm going, maybe Seattle goes back, gets a field goal. I'd be good. And then I needed one point. That's it. Any (laughs) score. And then the thick two made it. So I got one extra point. Outstanding. (laughs) 18, nine to nine tied at the end of the first half over (laughs) 17.5 catches. And if you want to experience the rush of dopamine, (laughs) You can head over to betonline.ag. You can bet on whatever, pro football, college football, uh, basketball, hockey, MMA, whatever. Just enter promo code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, all one word. When you sign up, you get a 50% match on whatever your first deposit is. It's promo code LOCKEDON at betonline.ag, where the game starts. All right, moving on, everybody, with the Tuesday Fantasy Forum. We got Kate Majuk here. We're going to talk a little bit of fantasy football. It is a crucial like moment right now. 
in fantasy because playoffs are coming up or maybe even started if you're doing like the two week playoff format. Uh, Mm -hmm. And you may have just lost your ringer, both Christian McCaffrey now on IR out for the year and Dalvin Cook out for some undeterminate amount of time. What do we do? Uh, We cry, we panic, we sing Kumbaya (laughs) and hope to God that we can like string together some uh, some form of uh, like scoring and, and just put together a viable roster at this point. It's been a brutal, brutal season in terms of injuries. Uh, even Saquon Barkley, like it hasn't, uh, you know, come to fruition as he returns from injury. It's just been a disaster at the running back position. But I will say I'm very excited about Alexander Madison, top waiver wire of the like easy hands down top waiver wire pickup this week. Um, and then you have Chuba Hubbard right behind Christian McCaffrey, who is definitely set to see the lion's share of touches. So. The, the nice thing about these two teams is though they are so crucial to your fantasy rosters, they do have backups that like kind of slot right into those um, like just easy roles. Uh, Alexander Madison, I think rest of season, uh, borderline RB1, RB2. He's, he's done nothing but fantastic things for fantasy when Dalvin Cook's out of the lineup, averaging more than 20 PPR points per game when he's given these opportunities as a starter. Hard to beat that. Wow. Chuba, that schedule's looking a little rough for Chuba. We've got a week 13 bye. Um, so if you guys can only place one, it's got to be hands down Alexander Madison. Don't forget the Panthers have that week 13 bye, which might, might you know, put Chuba down the list in your priority pickups because uh, you're just going to have to hold him. And then he's got a couple of tough matchups. Uh, we have the the Falcons, but then uh, the, the Bucks and the Bills. Those are not juicy for fantasy. So um, definitely, definitely prioritize your Alexander Madison's this week because I think that that could be your league winner. Yeah. My favorite thing about Alexander Madison is that he knows the difference between a guard and a center. It's really, it's it's amazing. It's not universal Uh, among the Vikings. (laughs) It is not universal, but I do, I I, I do appreciate his willingness to scooch his quarterback when, (laughs) when push comes to shove. It, well, he, plus he one stepped up to the plate. In, yeah, one scooch point. This week. <laughs> half points per scooch. Uh, points there per is scooch, one. Yes, I do play in a points per scooch, scooch format. Um, <laughs> very competitive. Very competitively. There's one foil to the Madison thing, which is uh, Kene Wangu, who has returned a couple of touchdown uh, kickoffs for touchdowns here, and that's kind of his main role. But he's going to get some carries too. He's going to kind of take over if Madison takes over the cook carries. Wangu takes over the Madison carries. Um, and he's really dynamic. Of course, he's really, really fast and he's a rookie that's still kind of learning the ropes and all that stuff. As the season goes, I could actually see him eating into that carry share. So if you're in a deeper league and you can't get your hands on Madison, um, Wongu might be a reasonable flyer if you have the space for it. Oh, and he's definitely somebody that's uh, probably available in your your dynasty leagues, even those deep, deep leagues. Um, but I have a fun fact for you. So the last rookie running back, I think this is the stat, uh, the, the last rookie running back to uh, return two touchdowns like that was Cordero Patterson. So uh, we he wasn't a running back. Even. About his, <laughs> we don't have to worry about his breakout uh, for like the next six to 10 years. So I think yeah, we're good. Yeah. Well, the difference is he actually plays the position. <laughs> Cordell Patterson yes. didn't right. play any running back until I think he got to the Patriots. Yeah, pretty Gosh, much. He, and look at what he's done. Uh, yeah. Cordero Patterson and Alexander yeah. Madison, your league winners right there. Yeah. There there's a couple of league winners. Love that. Um, I want to ask you one more thing before we get you out of here, Kate. The New Orleans Saints look like Alvin Kamara's on the mend. I know usually you'd want to throw him right back in a lineup, but it also looks like they're con- they're considering starting Taysom Hill starting this Thursday night up against the Dallas Cowboys. Does that make you pump the brakes at all on Alvin Kamara? I'm contractually not allowed uh, to fade Alvin Kamara. Just based on the upside, you cannot sit Alvin Kamara if you sit him <laughs> Uh, bad things will happen like nine times out of 10. Uh, my rule of thumb is always like, it, can you, uh, if this player went off on my bench, would I want to literally shoot myself in the foot? Alvin Kamara is one of those guys that would warrant a shot to the foot for me. He's going to make it on my lineup, but you definitely have to temper expectations. Obviously, we don't have a huge sample size with Taysom Hill as a starting quarterback, but in those four games 
that he has started. Uh, Kamara's just averaged 14 PPR points per game, which isn't, uh, it, it's not necessarily going to kill you, but um, it doesn't necessarily make your lineups any stronger. Uh, the lack of targets, he's only, uh, you know, four targets per game as opposed to uh, the like nearly seven that he's averaging without Taysom Hill. The upside is lower. So here's what I do. I start Alvin Kamara because you can't not. And then sure. you, with your flex plays, you shoot for the moon, shoot for your upside and you call it a day. Cause that's like, that's the only way you can live with yourself without a shot to the foot when this is all said and done. It's the kind of stuff we all kind of have to do. Cause I feel like if you drafted in the top five, your first round pick is out for the season. And yes, <laughs> you just kind of have to, yeah, probably <laughs> you, you have to make these kinds of aggressive plays. That's the equalizer. When you get to this time of the year, everybody's dealing with injuries. Everybody's lost a guy and the equalizers who's willing to make those aggressive plays, who's willing to kind of give up on their names and go and get a guy like Chuba Hubbard. That's not really the name and go do that. Like that's really the, the big thing. Yeah. Make those yeah. moves when your leagues. Got to get it. Kate, we appreciate you very much for coming through. Uh, you can follow Kate on Twitter at FF Ball Blast. And of course, catch her along with Marcus Mosher and some of the other guys over at Locked On Dynasty Football. Kate, we appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Locked On NFL. Luke Braun, Ross Jackson. Tomorrow, it's Tony and James. They're going to bring you everything you need to know around the NFL, as well as our NFL power rankings, only available here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Our power rankings, at least. The good ones. Uh, for The right ones. <laughs> for, the correct the right ones. ones. Yes, that's right. We appreciate you, as always, making this your first listen of the day. For your second listen today, go and check out your boy Q, as well as handicapping expert Lee Sterling over at Locked On Bets. When you're some money for Luke Braun. I'm Ross Jackson. You can follow him on Twitter at Luke Braun NFL, myself at Ross Jackson Nola, and we will see you again here tomorrow on another episode of Lockdown NFL, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.